Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Thanks for joining us. We know that you're busy and we likewise, so we'll hop right in. So this week we had shows with Ian Farrar from Purium, uh, giving you the rundown on some of the new product lines and some of the solutions for different diseases and needs. And then of course, uh, we had wonderful Holly Saliano uh, join us and give us her musings on what's going on with regards to the global financial reset. And today we'll be interviewing with Rod Steele for the month. And then next week, we're looking forward to good friend Greg Manorino making a return appearance on Monday. He's going to have some timely information on what's going on, all things financial and geopolitical. And then Holly, part two. Uh, Nick had some scheduling issues and travel, so we weren't able to do an interview with him this month, but we'll be picking it up later next month. And we have a powerhouse lineup for April. We'll be talking about that later next week as the time approaches. Okay, so here are the key headlines for the week. Precious metals are were at an all-time high on Wednesday, exceeding $2,200. Uh, for gold, silver was at a high of $2,560. Uh, currently, as of right now, as this broadcast, $2,173.90 for gold, silver at $2,465, and oil standing pad at $8055. But those will all be subject to change, <clears throat> excuse me, as you all know, in the very near future as the economic shift continues to move upward. Zimbabwe allows the old currency to free fall as they position gold to be the standard backdrop for all of their currency and bonds. 39 more countries are planning to join the BRICS. And uh, Texas is also already applied as of last year to join the BRICS. They're in process of getting the nod this year, as Holly pointed out in our show last week. As you all know, Wednesday's key information was the, the breaking news that we broke out about Ireland and Vietnam's prime minister's of summarily resigning was the big headlines for the week, along with Javier Malay shutting down and boarding up the main central bank in uh, Argentina. And of course, the Fed paused their rates for the inevitable rate cuts that are going to be coming May through July, which will ultimately be the demise of the old SWIFT central bank demon system. <clears throat> Wisconsin becomes one of the last states to remove taxes on precious metals. There were a few kind of stragglers out there. They're now one of the last to get in and finish that up. And then uh, this came out this morning. Putin warns all the central banks around the world of uh, the catastrophic consequences of asset confiscation. Points to two things. One, don't try to put any more sanctions on Russia because, as many of you know, Russia and China control much of the world's supply chain. And that's why we've been saying for a while, stock up on food and water for at least two weeks, plus batteries and flashlights and all the necessary accoutrements that you probably all already know about and have already well planned. But this is the narrative for that. He's also using the weight of bricks against them because this is the narrative that needs to be uh, doled out to the normies to understand as things converge to the middle, the inevitability of the end of one system and the beginning of the good one. Uh, now we're going to answer a couple of questions as we promised as we're kind of changing things up week to week. Uh, so there was three questions we're going to cover from shows this week. Uh, my friend Jill, who I've known from Jasara News for a while, followed her over there, back and forth, good banter. Uh, she's in Florida. Shout out to her and my my uh, mom's side of the family that's in Florida. She's in that region. She's asking about the solar eclipse and the importance of it. There's a lot of ramifications, Jill, as we discussed. Um, if you go to my Telegram channel, we put up several articles and videos that attest to that. But we have a lunar eclipse coming up on the 25th and the solar eclipse on the 8th has many potential ramifications. It's also a blood moon in Israel, which we know what that means. That's typically a, a lot of bad omens to come. Things we already know about death of one thing and, and life to another, death to life basically. Uh, but that has major ramifications and you can check those articles out on Telegram for more information, but too much to cover here, but there's a lot of significance. And we've also been told to go out and physically watch the eclipse without sunglasses if you can, get a good view of it depending where you live. Because from what I can see in the research, we're not gonna see another one coming for at least 23 years. So there you go. Uh, someone was asking on the show with Ian about uh, antlers, how often are they harvested? Well, obviously we're not out in the field to know on a day-to-day -day basis, but what I can tell you from what Ian tells me is it's done, they do it periodically a sweep. So it's usually done within days, not months, so that they can harvest it at the freshest point. So I think that's what the genesis of the question was, and hopefully we address that properly for you. And then lastly, I've been seeing this 
comment a lot from several people, and I do think this needs to get addressed. The project to delete the three zeros, what does that mean? Well, we've been showing you all along that Iraq is making every intentionality to come back in the international stage, to join the WTO, to join the BRICS. They're doing the taxes and tariffs and the HCL and all the laws, and they haven't even appointed the speaker yet. They can do that. That's a formality. They need to get all those things done in Iraq before they come to D.C. and let the U.N. know their intentionality to come back in the international stage and turn back on the purchasing power. A lop would be all they would have to do is remove three zeros, and that would be the rate. That's a demonic reset. That's not what we're going to get. We're going to get a godly reset, and, and clearly Iraq is showing you that because they wouldn't be doing all this work just to lop off three zeros. So that's what that refers to. Now, <clears throat> I will say additionally, there are some people espousing that they might do what's called a re-denomination. And all that means is if you took, for example, the, the espousal of the example of a $25,000 dinar note, they would change the note and it would be a $25 denote, a note in Iraq, which would equate roughly slightly under one to one here in the US. But what we believe in our team, the most likely scenario, and we've said this all along, we're sticking with it, is that they're going to come back in the international stage and in, introduce a rate on a digital asset-backed platform, and then the market will determine the value. In simple parlance, it's like this. Here's our analogy. Think of it like real estate. Those of you who are real estate agents will appreciate this, or people who bought a house will know this well. You take the worst house on the best block, build it up, uh, renovate it, make it beautiful. Now it becomes the best house on the best block. Then is the agent, which would be the World Economic, uh, not the, excuse me, the IMF and um, uh, the UN and the Bank of International Settlements, all the financial people and the US Treasury for that matter would be the listing agent. And they would put that rate out as a lowball rate, whatever that is, because we don't do dates and rates here. But they put out a seminal rate, whatever that is, a buck, dollar fifty, doesn't matter. They put that out, and then the buyers, that's us and all the other countries who have dinar, we know who many of those are, would then start bidding each other up. It becomes a bidding war. And then that price goes way beyond what the minimum threshold was. And it stays at that point for a certain point, and then it you know, fluctuates down to whatever the end game is. That's what we see happening on a digital asset platform uh, for the dinar. And, and it, so it doesn't really matter what they're, again, what the rate's going to be starting because it's where it ends. But I wouldn't be concerned about the Project Lee three zeros and the lot as that we don't see that happening. So that's, I think, at the genesis of what the question was. So that's all we have for today, folks. Pray that helped you and blessed you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, anything breaking, we'll, we'll get back with you right away. Otherwise, we will see you on the shows and next week's wrap-up. Take care. God bless.